The Cavalcade of America, presented by DuPont. In our chronicle of the passing scene, which we call the Cavalcade of America, you've heard stories of pioneers in government, in industry, in art, and in science. The kaleidoscope of events has pictured the role of the covered wagon, the advent of the railroad, the steamship, and the airplane. And woven into this ever-changing picture of American life, you've heard America's songs. Just as the songs of a country truly reflect the manners of their times, so the work of the scientists typifies the progress and advancement of a nation. The writers of our songs try to bring pleasure into the lives of the people. So also our research chemists, such as those who work in DuPont laboratories, striving to provide more comforts and conveniences, hoping to make the world a happier place in which to live. Their goal is the objective expressed in the DuPont pledge, better things for better living through chemistry. The singers you will hear on this evening's program are Gladys Wright, Mary Hopple, Alden Edkins, Charles Harrison, Wallace McGill, and Everett Clark, with Don Voorhees and the DuPont Cavalcade Orchestra. present songs of that colorful period in American history, the gay 90s. The songs of no other decade picture so vividly the tempo of their time. And because these songs were first heard in the theaters, music, and concert halls of New York, we invite you to turn back the clock with us and join a group of young people, a city pair and a country couple, as they're making their way to Broadway, not the Broadway of today, but the Broadway of the gay 90s, centered around 14th Street. The conventional way to reach the theater section is by handsome cab. But a new marvel of transportation, the Third Avenue Elevated Railroad, is the talk of the town. And now we find our young friends standing on a downtown platform waiting for the steam train, the predecessor of the electric train that runs on the L of today. Oh, oh sir, I'm so excited. This is my first ride on the new L. Well, oh, isn't that the cutest engine? Well, now, just wait till we get on it and start whizzing past folks upstairs' windows. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. Yeah? You better put blinkers on Johnny. You country folks aren't used to such sights. <laughs> hey, you talk as if we didn't have upstairs windows in the country. Johnny and I may come from the country, but we're not hasty. No. Come on, now, let's get aboard. Come on. Get yeah, some of your petticoats, Jay. So I'm going on the steps. And there are some seats over there. Hurry up. Okay. Come on, get up. Now, Johnny, don't get up. Four, two, three. Four, two, three. Next. Oh, they're starting to move now. They're moving. And where are we going first, Charlie? Kate and I want to see everything. Well, you're not going to be able to see much of anything if you really want to see something of everything. <laughs> well, that can't be helped. i got to go home tomorrow. I said I was going to see New York in one day, and I'm going to see it if it kills me. <laughs> Kill all of us. <laughs> well, I've seen the Brooklyn Bridge and the Statue of Liberty and Central Park. Oh, and... Johnny, look at those electric lights over there. Oh, yeah. Say, Charlie, do you believe what they say, that they'll have them all over New York in a few years? Yes, they're getting to be pretty popular. Oh, say, speaking of lights, have you heard that new song? Charlie, you mean the one about the new electric light? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Kate yeah. bought a copy of it yesterday. Let's see, it, it goes, um, all our ballroom beauties who look so nice at night will not seem half so charming by the new electric light. That's it. <laughs> there are some of us we'll welcome, and there's some will hate the sight of this latest, greatest wonder. That's the new electric light. <laughs> <laughs> Show us how our sweetheart keeps the girl so long and bright. bright. What makes their blushes we can see for a new electric light. <laughs> Oh, 
in Tony's after music hall. Uh, but we'll have to hurry if we're going to be in time to catch Lottie Gilson. Oh. Lottie, Lottie Gilson? Yes, a little magnet. She made Annie Rooney famous, remember? Oh, oh. yes, I do. They say she uh, You're not the only pebble on the beach. That's right. Uh, there, uh, now. Uh, be careful uh, going down these elevated steps. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, take my arm, man. That's there. Uh, all right, then. Hi, I uh, hear that this Lottie Gilson's a pippin. Oh, oh she's a peach, all right, John. She's a peach. But I'd rather hear Minnie Schultz any day. <laughs> My goodness, this is a long flight of stairs. Yeah. Well, it's shorter of going down than coming up. Oh, Kate, look. Well, there goes Lily and Russell in that Victoria. Oh, gee, isn't she beautiful? Oh, and those clothes. Say, do you suppose those diamonds are real? Yeah, mm. sure they're real. Of course they are. Uh, come on now, let's hurry up. Uh, look out for those bicycles. Oh, 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 what do you mean by that? I tell you, they're all the real law against those scorches. They almost ran over me. Oh, gee, I'm anyway. sorry, Kate. Are, are you all right? I think so. Well, that's good. Well, here we are. Mm. Well, get out your quarters, Johnny. Tony Pastor doesn't put on a free show, you know. <laughs> Oh, Johnny. Uh, Board pictures, please. Step inside and find your piece, ladies and gentlemen. The show's already started. Come on, Johnny. You can see those pictures later. Come on. Here I am. Oh, we just missed the comedian. Yeah. Oh, but look. We're just in time to hear my favorite song. A sweet tuxedo girl you see. Queen of Quell Society. From the farmers, fun can be when it's all the tricks you see. I'm not too young, I'm not too old, not too timid, not too bold. Just the kind you like to hold. Just the kind of balls I'm told. <laughs> I'm looking for of innocence. Papa says a big expense. Old mates say I have no sense. But boys declare I am immense. <laughs> 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 Before my song, I do conclude I want it strictly understood. So fond of fun, I'm never rude. So not too bad. Oh, I'm not too good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Naughty but nice. Oh, good. <laughs> Perhaps Kate would prefer the Eden Use with the waxwork. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> well, we better get a handsome man. Hello! Capture, capture, yes. handsome lady! Right here. Uh, get in, everybody. Yeah, right hand. Okay, yeah, yeah. Take it easy, yeah. Johnny. All right. All right, Cabby. To Custer and Beal. Right to Arthur. Custer and Beal. Get yeah. up. Get up. Yeah. champagne corks to the cork room, eh? What's Charlie talking about, Anna? <laughs> well, they take the corks out of the champagne bottles and pin them on the walls. They have one whole room just lined with corks. Most of them are autographed. Oh, oh. Charlie, mm -hmm. won't that be something to tell the folks about when we get back home, Kate? Johnny, if you tell anybody about our having even touched champagne, I'll never forgive you why I'd be the scandal of the town. Hey, oh. come on, you two. Night's no longer young, and we've got plenty of places to go if you want to make the round. Come on! Uh -huh. All right. No, you're not young. Oh, look at the cute little girl. 
girl coming up the Oh, little girl's nothing, eh, Johnny? Oh, yes. <laughs> That's one of the famous sister acts. Come on, let's find the table. We're able to find this way. Yeah, thank you. Oh, this is the most gorgeous place I've ever seen in all my life. Oh, I, I, I want to hear him sing. Yeah, quiet. place in town had its singers who introduced the songs the whole nation sang. Lottie Gilson brought tears to the eyes of thousands with her rendition of the famous Little Lost Child, and Mother Was a Lady, and other favorites of the day. Minnie Schultz was her rival for popular acclaim, as was Imogene Cummer. But no trip around the town was complete without a visit to Proctor's famous Pleasure Palace. So let's join our friends as they continue their round of old New York. In the gay 90s. Oh, listen, we're just in time for the big number. Oh, good. Daisy Bell. Oh, I love her. Oh, that's the bicycle song, isn't it? Sure, yeah. everybody's singing it. Oh, now, Johnny, don't you dare lose all my programs. I'm saving you to show the folks back home. Come, come on, let's find our seat. Come on, hold on. Sometimes it's hard to tell If I am longing to share the lot Of you beautiful lazy bell Daisy, Daisy, give me your answer to I have Daisy all of a lot Call the gay 90s was the golden age of vaudeville. Dozens of music halls and variety theaters flourished along Broadway. But perhaps the greatest of these was the one that bore the name of a famous cubby team. Oh, well, you know. getting tired, folks? Oh, no, oh, sir. Oh, right. <laughs> what, what's next? Well, you just haven't seen New York unless you've been to see Weber and Fields. That's right, Anna. And here we are. 
Let's see what we get in the grab bag this time. Huh? <laughs> My head's so full of tunes, I'll be humming from now till Christmas. Uh, four tickets, please. Three dollars each. Oh, three dollars. Shilling. You'll be missing about half the show, sir. Oh, oh that's all right. Yeah. We're just hitting the high spot. Yep, that's the you. high spot. Thank three dollars a seat. Johnny, you'll be sure to get a program here. His yeah, pockets yeah, are right. bulging with programs now. Tickets, okay. please. Right, here you are. The second aisle to the left. Oh, thank you. Come on, sir. Come on. Oh, doggone it, Charlie. I'll, I'll bet we missed the best part. Oh, not much. We're just in time to hear Lillian Russell sing Come Down My Evening Star. Oh. And from out the days of night Come the stars that shine and bright I spoil the one I do love I recognize my true love Bill and the Variety Halls were not the only cradle of the songs of the 90s. The earlier presentation of the Gilbert and Sullivan operettas had brought on a wave of musical comedies. DeWolf Hopper, Digby Bell, Francis Wilson, Jefferson DeAngelis were the stars of the day. Victor Herbert was beginning to give America the nearest thing it had had to classic light opera. best-remembered operettas was Reginald de Coven's Robin Hood. Let's join our friends as they take their seats at the old Standard Theater. Come on. Come on. Oh, I'm sorry. This is the third time this show has come to New York, eh? Uh, that's William McDonald as Little John, and soon Henry K. Barnaby will come on as the Sheriff of Nottingham. And who are those others? Oh, those are Robin Hood's men. Uh, John, he's singing about brown October ale. <laughs> I wouldn't mind a glass of brown October ale. <laughs> no, but I. I want to hear them. Oh, quiet. Oh! 
Dorothy Bartlett Davis. She's wonderful. Oh, doesn't she make a cute boy? Yeah. Oh, Dad, it's Old Promise Me, isn't it? Yes, you know, they tell me that Old Promise Me wasn't in the opera originally. They put it in because Miss Davis wanted the solo in the second act. Good thing they did. It's the most popular song in the show. People are hitting the when the gay blades of old New York raced their sleighs through Central Park over the first snow to win a magnum of champagne at McComb's Tavern. When the sayings of Mr. Dooley were the talk of the country. When the Gibson girl was the ideal for the girls of the day to copy. When the stage glittered with such names as Maud Adams, Mrs. Fisk, Augustus Thomas, William Gillette. When beautiful Lillian Russell and gay Faye Templeton were the talk of the town. It was the mauve decade, the gaslight era, and its like will not be seen again. But it was a colorful and important period in the onward march of the cavalcade of America.
gay 90s. Then, as now, one very important item in my lady's wardrobe was her perfume. And there's a legend about perfumes that goes like this. In the course of a walk along a beach, a woman sat down on a large rock to rest. When she got up, she noticed that the rock stuck to her dress. It later developed that the rock was a huge chunk of a substance called amber grease, worth its weight in gold to the makers of perfume. And, of course, she made her fortune. Whether that story is true or not, the fact remains that amber grease, which comes from the sperm whale, was essential to perfumers for centuries. It is what is known as a fixative. And a fixative does what its name implies, fixes a perfume so that its fragrance will be uniform and will last longer. Perfumers used to depend on three sources for their fixatives. Amber grease from the whale, musk from the musk deer of the high Himalaya mountains in Asia, and a fatty substance derived from the snarling civet cat of northern Africa. But whales, deer, and cats are, to say the least, somewhat uncertain sources for substances essential to a large, important industry. It was logical, therefore, for the research chemists to enter the picture and go to work. Various substitutes were found. But after years of study and experiment, DuPont chemists developed a true synthetic musk containing the essential ingredient of natural musk. This product is now distributed by DuPont under the trademark Astratone. Even though it sells for $200 per pound, Astratone costs so much less than natural musk and so little is required that it enables you to enjoy fine perfumes at a much lower cost. The development of synthetic musk is probably chemistry's most important contribution to the perfumer. But it is only one of many. Before science entered perfumery, it took 25 tons of violet to make one ounce of natural violet oil. Lyle and Lily of the Valley perfumes couldn't be produced at all, for crushing these delicate flowers destroys their odor. Not only has chemistry found a way of creating these odors from such raw materials as coal tar, but it has developed many entirely new ones. And where 200 fragrances existed before in the form of natural products, over a thousand are now available. So you see, the research chemist produces new and longer-lasting fragrances for my lady's perfumes and cosmetics, for soaps and sprays and dozens of other household articles that we use every day. Here again, the DuPont chemist has helped make life a bit more pleasant. And in laboratories all over the country, he is continuing his efforts to provide, as DuPont expresses it, better things for better living through chemistry. Golden Touch, a story of John A. Sutter and the discovery of gold in California, will be the subject of our broadcast when next week, at the same time, DuPont again presents The Cavalcade of America. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.